we're going to have a look at inverse operations and how they are used in solving equations. To start, let's imagine we have this function machine which takes any input and adds 3 to it. So if the input is 5, obviously the output, when you add 3 to it, will be 8. Now the thing we want to be looking at today is what if we know the output? How do we get back to the input? So if we know the output is 4, what we're asking ourselves is what plus 3 will give me the answer of 4. And hopefully that's fairly obvious. The answer is 1. How do we get to that 1, the answer of 1? Well, one way we can think of it is that to get from 4 back to 1, we've subtracted 3. Subtracting 3 is the inverse operation of adding 3. It's the opposite operation. It undoes what adding does. So to get back from 4 to 1, we need to undo the adding of 3 by subtracting 3. Let's have a look at another example. Imagine now you've got a function machine that's multiplying by 4. Well, if you took your 5, you multiply it by 4, the output will be 20. Again, what we're more interested in now is figuring out if we know the output, how do we get back to the input? So what we're asking ourselves here is what multiplied by 4 will give me 12. Now, hopefully you immediately know the answer is 3. But you could also have thought of it by using the notion of inverse operations. You've multiplied by 4 to get the output, so how do you get back to the input? You undo multiplication by dividing. The inverse operation of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. Let's have a look at a slightly more complicated example. Imagine we start with a number, any number, and we're going to just call that x for now, and we divide that number by 3, and then we add 4 to that number, and we get the answer of 9. The question is, what was the number? Now, you might be able to sort of think it out in your head. What? Divided by 3, and then after you add 4 to it, will give you 9 as the answer, but that's not actually that easy to work through in your head. And so what we're actually going to do is go slowly back through the inverse operations. So we know we ended up finally, after we've added 4, with the answer of 9. So what did we add 4 to to get 9? Well, we can do the inverse operation, subtract 4, and see that it was 5 that we added 4 to to get 9. Now we want to see what was it that when we divided it by 3 gave us 5 as an answer. And so we can do the inverse operation here and say 5 multiplied by 3. And we can see that we would have started with 15. Check that it's right. 15 divided by 3 does give me 5 plus 4 does give me 9. So simply starting at the 9 and doing the inverse operations one at a time gets me back to the number I start with. I know that it's 15, that when I input will give me the output of 9. Now let's see how this links to equations. So I'm going to go through the same example again, but this time put the equation alongside it. So we start with the number x, so there's the x in the equation. We divide that number by 3, well, how does that look in an equation? Remember we've spoken about that division is just the same as a fraction line can be used to represent division. And so showing that your x is divided by 3, your number is divided by 3, can be shown like that. We then take what comes out of that and add 4 to it. So we must put that into the equation. And the answer we then get is 9. So we have to say that that is equal to 9. So this picture here represents the equation x over 3 plus 4 equals 9. Now to solve the equation, we want to get back to x. Let's do exactly as we did previously. First, we're going to undo the plus 4. And that we undo by subtracting 4. Let's do that in our equation as well. 
and we see that we end up with 5. Now we need to undo the dividing by 3 and we know that the way to undo dividing by 3 is use the inverse operation which is to multiply by 3 and what we've done here in the picture we're also doing in the equation and when we multiply by 3 we see we get to our answer of 15.